after watching this episode, looking at Monique's family proves that obesity is genetic. Hey, what's up and hello, this is the Chris Nicole giving you my views on life, love, and the world of entertainment through my eyes. <sighs> okay, where did they find Monique and her family? Seriously, where did the show find them? Now, apparently they found them on the internet, but <sighs> I mean, they claim they're from Chicago. I don't believe it anymore. They give me like, farm vibes like they were raised on a farm somewhere yeah like first of all I have never seen a family where every last sibling or person in that family is obese not thick not fat but obese I've never seen it it's like it's like 1,000 pound sister type of obese. Now I see why people compare them to the clumps because it's just, I don't know, like, like I said, I really think this is proof that obesity is genetic because all of them are big girls. And then they brought in a new sister and child, her name has to be Nicole. Just wow. Her name has to be Nicole. And she big too. What a gap. Like, I've never seen anything like this before. But let me get off of that. These women, I don't even want to call them women. These chicks, no, I'm sorry. These scallywags are vile, uncouth, and bullies. And then on top of that, all of the internal issues that they have and as mean spirited as they are, their outer appearance is just as bad. These scallywags look worn out. Like I still can't believe Monique is in her mid thirties. And from my understanding, she's the oldest. They all look like they're in their late forties, early fifties. I wouldn't even say late forties. Cause typically, especially as black women, we age very well. Damn it, they look like they in their 50s. They look like they 20 years older than what they claim their ages are. I need to see a birth certificate, no shade, but I don't know if she is in her mid-30s. But anywho, these women look like they drink malt liquor every day. They smoke every day. They done had a couple of bullet holes in them. Like, they look crazy. The hair was tragic. Monique was the only one who had decent hair. I will say that a lot of times Monique can lay her hair. She can definitely put on a good wig. But baby, Calandria, I was like, where does where is your hairline? That forehead? Oh my gosh. Sylvia, her hair looked like a skunk on the top of her head she had like a gray blonde brown like I don't know what type of color she had on her head it looked like it was a dead animal on her head and then the godmother that hair wasn't moving baby like you remember that song my hair it don't move the godmother looked like she literally curls her hair with gorilla glue I'm telling you they not from Chicago they gotta be from a farm somewhere like there's no way Chicago is one of the top hair capitals like there is no way they are from the city of Chicago but with that being said again I'm gonna be so happy when the show was over I was on my boy Gio's um channel and shout out to Gio and we were talking about this episode especially the situation with Monique and Derek and from the looks of it, we both agreed that we think it was staged. So either this was planned between Monique and Derek, Monique, Derek, and production, or everyone knew, okay? I don't know, but it definitely does. We, we agreed it did look staged. So just a small recap. Monique 
used her family to do her dirty work. Now, apparently, again, she's in her mid-30s. She used her family to do her dirty work to pretty much grill Derek about his shady ways. Now, I find it interesting that Mo, as I call her, Booga Bear, now I'm calling her Marshmallow Mo, always has to use her family as her mouthpiece while she just sits there looking down at Derek. And honey, she still has to look down at Derek even when she's sitting down, child. But this further shows proof that Monique is a walking contradiction. She's full of shit. And let me tell you why. Because she was so quick to tell Derek to keep his sisters and family in check. And yet she allowed her family to tag team Derek. So in other words, they can bully him and ambush him. But Monique can't receive negative treatment from his sisters, even though she deserves that negative treatment because of her actions. Okay, Monique, you're full of shit. But moving on. I had some issues with this episode, fake or not, staged or not. One of my biggest pet peeves is when family and friends get involved in a family member or a friend's relationship, okay? That's not your place, and any real adult will understand that. Only in certain situations, you may cross those boundaries, and that is when there's possibly like DV involved then I can understand that. But this type of stuff from cheating and lies and manipulation, stay the hell out of it, okay? Furthermore, I've always been the type of person, and my, I pride myself on this, and a lot of my friends and my people come to me to vent about their you know, concerns, issues, frustrations, whatever the case may be. And I feel comfortable going to some of them, you know, about that as well. And I think the reason why a lot of people have no problem talking to me or venting to me because what you say to me stays with me. I'm not running my mouth about your business. And I damn sure am not going to go to your significant other to check them about what you told me. Both of them are violations. You want to know a quick way for me to remove you from my life? Let me say something to you in confidence about my personal business. And then I find out that you, or not even just personal business, just me having a, just an intimate conversation with you. If I find out you told someone my business, bye. And I'm serious about that. You will stay out of my life. You will get the hell away from me. I don't play those games because I pride myself on being that person for someone else. What you tell me, it stays with me. It's not my business to tell. And so with that, of course, looking at this scene was pissing me off because one, these are grown ass women trying to check a grown ass man about their sister's grown ass relationship. So you get in Derek's ass about the stuff that Monique told you. And you actually find this acceptable, which is why I said scallywag type of chicks. They're scallywags because any real woman or man in this situation, you will say, look, you have all the proof you need. He's already cheated on you. Your intuition is telling you that something else is going on based off of what he's doing. There is nothing that I can say that is going to change the situation, especially if you have already said. So you can vent to me all you want, but that's your relationship. You either move on, leave that man, or allow him to cheat in peace but I'm not getting involved in it. That's what, that's what adults, that's what mature adults do. But no, that's not what happened. They go off on him and, you know, he held his composure. And again, I'm not sticking up for Derek because I think Derek is a piece of shit and a liar, but he held his composure when they was all screaming at him. But then Monique decides to snatch his phone from him. Now, granted, have we seen her snatch his phone any other time? 
And she definitely has had opportunities to snatch his phone before. But for whatever reason, she got real bold when that family was there to snatch his phone. And then she goes into the bathroom. And while Derek is following her, her freaking family starts to ambush him physically, like, like literally grab him and push him out of the way so she can lock herself in the bathroom so she can look at his phone. Don't put your damn hands on me. Okay. You already crossed lines telling me things that my woman or my man should be telling me, not you, but then you're going to put hands on me after she snatched my phone. I don't care if Derek is cheating or not. I don't care if any woman is cheating or being scandalous or not. There ain't that many people in their right mind that's going to deal with that nonsense. Seriously, they're not going to deal with it. So, and furthermore, again, and we, I know everyone has been saying this, Monique, bitch, you already got your answer. You've had your answer. So that's why it's like at this point, people are tired of you being on this show because it's like, what else can anyone say or do at this point? It's the same storyline over and over. You're cheating. I want proof you're cheating. Give me your phone. Like, please, it's over. The whole situation is over at this point. So another thing. It was such a fair, I mean, a, a disadvantage. It, it wasn't fair because we all know Derek is a small man. That situation when they were pulling him back and pushing him back, that was like 10 people against a half of a man. Like, seriously, I was just like, why do, why do all of y'all need to block him? Literally, it only would take one person to block him. He wouldn't be able to get through. Why all of y'all got to be doing that? This is what I'm saying. They're bullies. Like they was just doing too much. And then the godmother who's, you know, supposed to be like the second mother, you supposed to be the one who has more sense, has more maturity to say this is some petty nonsense, but you the main one pulling him back, putting your hands on him. And honestly, the main person who would have had Derek's back would have been Elizabeth. But of course, he had to diss her in the beginning of the episode by saying, oh, no, she ain't coming. You know, she crazy. She crazy. Really, fool? Because the last time I checked, especially in this episode, we see who the crazy ones are. And it was all those people who was at that table screaming at you and putting hands on you. But I say all of that to say that you have to set boundaries with family and friends. That's my main point. Because even in a healthy, great relationship, what they did would end that relationship. Like you have to understand that you need to let family and friends know they, they need to step back. Because at the end of the day, it is your decision. If you want to look like a fool, look like a fool. Point blank, period. Now, apparently, Monique has removed Derek from her page and removed all pictures. From my understanding, she has done this before. It's probably another way to create buzz so they can try to get a show or, you know, whatever. But I'm not buying it because Monique's self-esteem is so low. Any attention is acceptable for her. Even when people respond to her and say that she's stupid for dealing with Derek, I just don't see her ending this relationship because even being affiliated with him gives her probably more attention than she has ever had in her life. And that just shows you that attention and fame is more addictive for people than money because we know she's not making that much money off of this show and she damn sure isn't making that much money off of those interviews. So with that being said, what did you guys think about the episode, especially these scenes with Monique and Derek? Do you feel the family cross boundaries? How do you feel about family interfering in family members or friends relationships? What's your take on it? But anywho, like, share and subscribe and I will see you on my next video. Peace.